Okay, welcome back to our final Fusion tutorial for our keychain project. This next step that I'm going to show you is not really necessary uh, for creating this part. However, lots of people like to have fun with it, and I want to make sure that you're aware of the tool and the function. So currently we've been working in Fusion, and our keychain is kind of this dull, ugly gray color that kind of mimics steel, uh, if you will. And it's a generic color that Fusion starts all your parts in. One of the things that we can do is we can go in here and change the appearance of our part. So to get to that menu, we're going to type the letter A. It's a shortcut. And your appearance menu is going to appear. You'll probably just have satin steel, okay, or steel satin up in here where it says in this design. Below it, you're going to have a library. And if I scroll in this library, there are all sorts of things. I'm going to expand this so that you can see it. There are all sorts of different materials. Uh, you've got things like paint. You can come in here and choose a type of wood. For this project, I honestly don't care what you choose. Uh, this is just for the sake of practicing with it. I'm going to use metal and open up this folder. And maybe we'll do a nice anodized red aluminum. Now, if you're in the library here and you have this arrow, okay, it's just a download arrow. Go ahead and click it. And what it will do is load it into Fusion for you. It helps free up some of the memory. Now, the way that we can do this, a couple different approaches. Number one, I can grab this color and click and hold it and move it up to in this design. It's going to put it there. And then if I want to color my entire keychain that anodized red, I'm going to click and drag it onto it. And the next thing you know, it's changed. That's how we would change the entire appearance. Now, if I wanted to take it a step further and maybe highlight the rim and the tops of the letters with a different color, we could do that. So maybe I'll choose the blue anodized aluminum. To do this, you're going to want to drag it up to in this design. And then I'm going to highlight individually the things that I want. You need to be careful when you do this. I would suggest you zoom in so that it doesn't get tripped up. I'm going to click on it and highlight it. And I'm going to grab my anodized blue and drop it only on the highlighted portion. So make sure that it's correct. And I can go through. If I hold down my shift key, I can get more than one area at a time. So let's go ahead and get our zero or our O. And then the same thing. I'm going to grab my color and drop it on top, making sure that only the highlighted areas are lit up. And now we've got a keychain that's kind of two-tone. All right, so you're welcome to take a few minutes to play with that, see if you can change the appearance. I would like to see some kind of appearance added to it. Um, it's up to you what you want to use. There's even like water, there's glass, uh, whatever you so choose. There's carbon fiber in here. Okay, so you can go ahead and find those things and change the appearance. Once you have your appearance changed and you're happy with it, choose close. The last thing that we need to do with our keychain is export it for 3D printing. And if you're following along these tutorials just to learn Fusion, you can skip this step. But for our class purposes, we're going to 3D print these. And in order to do that, we need to change what tool set we're using. So right now we've got all these different things. We've got solids. Okay. I'm going to go up into my menus above where the icons are. And on the right side, it says utilities. So right here, choose utilities. And the very first one over on the top left now says make. Okay. Click on the little 3D printer icon. And a small menu is going to appear. The very first thing you need to do in order to change anything is click on the selection. So I want to 3D print my keychain. I highlight it, click on it, it'll turn blue. A couple things we can leave alone. STL, that's kind of a standard file type for 3D printing, so we're going to let that set. We're actually going to leave our unit type in millimeter. Now that seems confusing because we spent all that time changing things to inches. 3D printers, or most 3D printers, operate on millimeters. So we're going to let that set the slicing program that we use later can counteract this and change it back to millimeters for us, but it's easier to leave it there. It just saves us a step. Where it says refinement, yours will probably say medium. Go ahead and turn that up to high. What refinement does is it changes the mesh, which you can't see, uh, and makes like your corners more round than what they are initially, uh, and then just makes your surfaces a little smoother. For output, Yours probably says send to 3D print utility. We do not want that because we're going to do this in-house. So uncheck the box. And at that point, you can go ahead and click OK. As soon as you click OK, a save as screen is going to pop up. We are going to save this the same way we saved our file. So I'm going to put in my last name, an underscore, 
and then type keychain. Okay, so last name, and then underscore, which is shift hyphen or shift minus sign, and keychain. Okay, it's asking us where we're going to save it to. All right, this has changed recently, so we know the project is an admin project. If this is not checked where it says saved to my computer, you can check it. Okay, so save to my computer. Make sure that it says downloads at the end. That is where we want it to land. If that's all good, you can click save. You're not going to see anything really happen other than the menu disappear, but you've successfully exported an STL file. And when we get back to class, we're going to go ahead and 3D print these. Well done.